Hello, San Bonani, and welcome to Wimbizo. It's another session. We are back, yo. We took a break Nyana, for a week. Uh, you know, I just want to first off thank each and every one of you that has been watching and sharing our videos. And if you haven't yet, don't forget to subscribe and check us out on the socials. It's at Wimbizo ZA. Uh, before I get into today, ne, a few weeks ago, we did a topic called Shoot Your Shot. And I forgot to give credit to the person who requested the topic, and she's been on my case. So I want to send a shout out to Tandega, my sister, for giving us a dope topic. It was a success. Everyone was talking about it. So thank you. If you also want to send us a topic, just let us know. You want to be a guest? Stay Okay, on to today. I'm not alone. I've got my team with me. Sanbonan. Hello, hello. And we've got a special guest, Fandar, Cassandra. Enjoy, Kim. Show up. Hello, hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? Yo, good. Uh, easy, easy. Welcome to you, Easy. Nice. Nice, man. Uh, thanks for having me here. So today we, we are going to be discussing a topic that you came up with or, or that you requested that we discuss. And it's about buying black. So I've been mm. buying black products and services. And don't you want to just quickly take us through the thinking and the, 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 the context behind that topic? No, man, uh, this thing is very straightforward. So um, it's something I've been thinking about for a long time, you know, um, driven by the social economic conditions in our country, really. Um, it doesn't take a, a lot for you to realize that wealth is spread across the country along the lines of race. You know what I'm saying? And then when you think about it, how do you change these things? For 26 years today, we've been looking for one to one place for the answer. And that's the government. And we, we're still here today, 26 years later. What can be done? What can we do differently? And I thought, wait, what if? What if there was perhaps an obligation, or may, not a legal one, mind you, because it gets dangerous there. What if there was an application for black people to, to take their money to other black pockets? Can we see a change in our townships? Can we see a change in our society? Can we see the, a change in our country? Can we see a change in the demographic in prisons today in South Africa? You know, that's what I'm, I was thinking about and that's what drove me to actually request that you have a conversation around this and let's see and share ideas and see where it takes us. Yeah. Mm. All right. Should buying black be an obligation? Of course, it should be an obligation, but we, uh, okay, I'm going to go first. I, I feel it should be an obligation that we buy black, but also uh, it's, it's twofold for me. It's or well, two sided. They, they's got, they's got the, 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 the business side, the entrepreneurship side, and there's the consumer side. So, so the entrepreneur's side, is your product good enough beyond just being black for me to buy it? And I think that's, that's where we need to, to start off with the conversation, which he, look, if a product is out there and it's, it's a quality product, then I believe which he, as black people, we should go and, and, and make other black people rich. Mara inking and now becomes when it's just a, a shit product, and excuse my French, but you want me to buy just because it's, 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 it's a penniless product. It's a black female, you know, but it's not a good product. The service is crap. Uh, for the product to be delivered, I have to wait, you know, three, three weeks. You know, so I think those are some of the things that's, that, that, that cause people to not buy uh, black products. And some of them, I'll dig deeper, but first, so black business is also, or black entrepreneurs we don't want to be honest when there's potential for new business if someone wants to buy i just I, if maybe i can't deliver i don't want to be honest and up and be upfront with it you know what i've i'm out of stock for now it will take time to deliver or i can't deliver this in the next week or i have too many orders that i'm dealing with we don't communicate those things we just bite a lot you know and then we we bite more than we can chew and then that's what creates that so yeah, man, that's my two cents for now. Yeah, man, I think I, I, I thanks uh, Cassandra for the awesome talk, man. It's an amazing one. I think 
No, I mean, I, I think my, my view is that I, I try and, and, and buy mostly, uh, you know, from black business about as much as I can. But as I as I said, I found that with the black business in the corner are been quite responsible enough to to deliver on what they are promising about. And hence I shy away from them. For example, like I bought a, I think a sweater online, I think like two weeks ago, from this black guy. He's a black dude, he's you know starting out with in support about a shop eating. Now to, to, to this very day, this guy Arafi. It's been two weeks in Mile. I gave him the money. So I'm Nandi. Grand. But if it's a thing from Abu, take a lot within two days, this thing, yeah, figure manja one. So we can't be said to Mele be obliged to buy from them because I've got responsible enough to, to deliver on what they're promising. So I'm saying if, 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 if we as black business are accountable, and honest and open about our services, then I think we will go a, a long way and hence creating wealth in Makasi and uplifting our society. So I think tips of what I need to know as in the future, as we're honest, manji, but Mangnan I gave it to you. So I think from my side, that's the issue that I, I have in a black business sometimes. Yeah. But all in all, I think we, we should support each other but as if honest about how we deal with our customers as well. Sure. Yeah guys, um I mean um, my view on supporting black businesses is I, I feel Uti before we actually get to a point where we can fully support black businesses, I think we must just first start with just supporting each other as a black nation first before we get into each other's pockets. Because they are Monelana a lot. Um, we don't want to see uh, someone else that's black succeed. Yeah, but there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of competition amongst black people that makes it so that you don't want the person that's next to you to succeed. And I think that's why, like, just to Tabisco's point and a little to what you've said, Kesha, as well, is that you find the won't will will say, yeah, sure, and and will want to bite off more than they can chew because they don't want to spread the load because. So I think for us to actually get to a point where we can fully. Um, support each other from a business perspective. It must first start from a societal uh, point of view. We see that's a kind of nation that we are. If I find a but an opportunity. I also want my Nituga, the Black Nation, Yabon, Tina, um, as a starting people to actually support Black businesses. And I think that's why you will find which most people will, will support the Black business. Then you'll see them on social media. I like losing you then, yeah? This is why I don't like supporting Black businesses at Hey, you turned into a robot. And this is the customer service I'm getting. Perfect. I think we're losing a lot of insight from her. Okay, I think this is a way of management. Yeah. yeah. CJ will have to cut that part out and then continue from yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, we lost you there for, for like a couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, what I was saying is we, we need to work on we need to work on e one like our, our relationship with each other as black people gala because we, we we don't want to see each other progress. And that's why when there's a tender, you will find it is the same people that keep getting that tender because and they don't want to extend a hand to the next person. So you've got a lot of issues, Tina, as black people that we need to sort out before we get to a point where we're like, okay, cool, let's support my businesses. And Nakona Kutsi, Nalok Trela Naga Bukutsi, no, Usman Manning, so it's only project next week, Imangani, Hauga Shebo, Bayabo, Kona Leon Teleo, 
you know, which we don't take our customer service seriously, you know, uh, which then makes it seem like black people are not being supported. And that's we also need to look at ourselves. We'll see, one, is the product good enough? And two, do you actually have the customer service? If Ungazi and you can get help from your neighbor, ask your neighbor, you know, let's, let's, let's try and create a wealth, not just for yourself, but for other people that are of color and jengao, yeah, well. So, yeah, I think there are a lot of underlying issues. So for me, I would say no. I don't think it should be something that is made a priority. I think what, what, is, what, what is important, though, is we must make a priority actually fixing our issues and working together first. Then everything else will follow suit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, man. <clears throat> cool, guys. I... Um, there are a lot of things I agree with what you guys are saying, but I I, I have questions also from that. Um, especially, let me start with uh, Utabi. So when he spoke on quality, and that seemed to be a common theme: quality in service, quality in product, quality of how these relationships are managed. You know, um, the black entrepreneur and the and the customer. You know how that relationship is managed. Also, that that quality is is seems to be in question. Now, uh, many people, when I engage this topic with them, they've always came back to me with that. And I, I agree, I see it also myself, but then what is the cause? What makes the black entrepreneur behave that way, really? Does he know that he's, um, for lack of a better term, I think this is a free space, uh, does he know that he's shitting the bed when he behaves that way? You know, is he away? What is his state of mind when he does that? And then also uh, back to what Apelele said uh, about black people uh, not wanting other black people to succeed, and that is a big problem also that that, that we need to, to 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 address. But then my thing is, when we go to these issues and when we point out these issues, how are these issues going to be resolved? Are we going to wait for black entrepreneurs to fix themselves and get their houses in order for? before we take our money to them? Or do we try and <laughs> be sympathetic, empathetic? Let's be empathetic and try and understand what's going on there. Because we cannot, and, and empathy is, is a very tough thing, tough thing to practice in mass. So uh, for instance, Tabi so, um he's got a business background. He's, he's a hustler himself. He sees me starting a business. So he can practice some empathy there when he sees me mistreat customers and things like that. Is that not perhaps something we should be encouraging in order for us to get to a state where we, we can easily support black, black businesses without any reservations? Because now these reservations that exist, are the, that you mentioned, they exist. They, they, but how do they go away? Adrian, I think I think I think maybe to be honest, I want to be honesty, call the guy up, Adrian, as in you give me a crap service, we are bad. Because if hence we have stuff like our oh, hello Peter, I wanna where you complain. So for example, if I get best service from taking a lot, I could complain, hello Peter, these guys are giving me best service, I wanna immediately, once they know what you have complained, these guys will, will fix the, the issue manage and manage the next day or two, the issue will be fixed. So I think we need to call each other out. As in George, what are you doing? In nonsense. I'm not seeing back in trying to get my mind. Then you learn Guti, how to 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 go forward. One as a person. Because if much of hey, so it's it's yes, oh, mundo, I'm not tired. We're being jammed. Yeah, I'm I'm putting down. Instead, the mulala. If I'm I'm cozy while it's still early, the culture is just just a tambi. Yeah, but that's my view. My my view on this is um, before you actually, actually even this thing is corrected before you actually even start a business it 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 just is corrected in the way that we treat each other. Titatanagangane as black people and I think that's the biggest thing. If you order li li figure from Mukesha or li figure from Umlungu, I will take I will much rather take it more seriously someone of um um lungu and we don't see our own value and that's why it becomes easy for you to um give really bad service and i think the whole empathy thing we are then enabling a behavior but we can't have that because we need to we need to maintain a standard 
if you had to run a business the same way that you you would want to have another like take a lot as you as you said you you expect a certain level of service not we must also put the same pressure on ourselves to create that kind of service to show what's not we can do it ever. but i think lendo you show your cassandra empathy you know about thinking of putting the moment is going to feel entitled to empathy and should too yeah but we don't really owe each other empathy but we do owe each other a common respect to realize what if if i'm a black customer i'm still an important customer yeah but it doesn't mean it's just because we don't mean something born or i will take you for granted because we are support i think we must really get out of that uh, state of mind of tsana kangcane because my money is still the same money that you'd get from another race yeah so that doesn't mean which you should take it less seriously yeah one so i think in, in it's the first point of it is just to make sure we think tina we one we have these conversations two we call each other out and three when you start a business don't start start your business with the entitlement or start with the expectation would say no because i'm black no we must get out of that you must just start your business because i you are good at what you're doing or you want to create a a change but it must not come from a point of view would say someone's going to give me a chance because i'm black it mustn't work like that be good at what you're doing if you're not ask for help but also don't create a situation would say just because you're black someone's going to uh empathize with you it, it doesn't the world doesn't work like that i don't know how many times you guys have been empathized with just because you're black so it it we can't we can't enable that kind of behavior from my end so yeah that's me yeah mm. uh just be, be, before for clarity for clarity uh when i said empathy i uh, i was not implying or suggesting that people accept sub substandard quality in any way shape or form i was just saying empathizing with the entrepreneur and then going to them behind the behind their counter you know and trying to assist and bring them you know up to standard that's what i meant by it it's not that you take your money for uh, inferior value so for instance um this thing this example kesha made about ordering something online and uh, still still waiting for it so if I am an observer and I see that entrepreneur do this to a customer. My empathy is not me taking money and going there to to give him more money so I can wait for three more weeks as well. My, the empathy myself practicing empathy is actually going to that person and saying, "Hey, um I'm aware of this issue in your business. There's this client that this, this happened between you and a client. What caused that? What are the issues there?" you know what can we improve you know let's bring your business up to scratch because um as you say to say to accept inferior pr- uh, uh, products for, for for money is actually killing ourselves because at the end of the day we are, we have to compete with other races who are further ahead so by empathy i mean actually getting involved in that space you know um it's not everyone's responsibility but i'm just putting it putting it out there you know can we get involved you know when it's not our business and say hey you know this can improve here and this is how it can improve this has been seen here and here this is how it can be done better it's another question so that's what i was saying okay okay but i think i think the empathy should start before before business nj ube kona the common courtesy and 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 the way that we treat each other first before we get into exchanging money because once it once money is involved then it becomes a whole different conversation get like jana even she's too much like abanisa before we actually get to a point where we are exchanging money and we are we are in that space let's just one respect each other as black people yeah, the, and watch how we treat each other and not take each other for granted because we do that a lot with the whole president to to know and on jabo ngizo be ngimbona ngizomqoqa i think we must just try and, and look at how we treat each other first before we actually even start trading services i think that's the i think that's where it starts yeah and to to build on to what apelele just said right now in in english and in business school or or, or university they call it biz, business planning that's a business plan so a lot of black entrepreneurs we don't plan our businesses we just uh wing things so we just go to market with a product we just start selling it we don't uh plan in terms of quantities in terms of how delivery will work you know we just want to wing things and usually what happens when you wing stuff it, it it catches up and it bites you in the ass you know told so we we need to learn from especially white people 
if there is a race that that plans everything, everything to with white people is is is, is thought through. Every every single thing. I, I remember like when I was still a kid, uh, drive, driving to school in the morning with my mom. And that's when I learned this. And my mom was telling me, like the sun was just in our face. And my mom was telling me, I say, and I was like, why? What do you mean? And she says, you don't know, see, when you're coming from black areas, Amakas, driving into town in the morning, you're always facing the sun. The sun is in, in your face. And when you are coming from white areas right now at this time, you are facing away from the sun. I was like, huh? that can be. And she said, even later on in the day, ne, uh, when you're now going back home from school, or from town, you will be facing the sun again. And when are they going home? And I was like, that can be. But I began to think about it. That's what it's called special planning. You know? So they do all these things. They plan everything they do, every single thing. So I then went to work for, for, for a, a company with white people. Well, I've worked with white people, and it proves it. Every single decision, when they make it, it's not just a, a, a thumbs up decision. So we also need to start also planning a product. And that's why it's also sometimes detrimental if we allow people to, to sell a product on the basis of saying it's a black business or it's a black what what, because they end up being, they, they compromise the quality. They end up selling blackness more than a quality product, you know. So in music, there was this lady, this this chick, hey man, there was this song of hers earlier this year. It's hot. Oh, it sounds even American, like it's proper quality song. And then chiki chiki, you find out, no, oh, this Eleni chick, no, she's she's actually a South African. She's a vendor chick. And it's like what? Do you understand? You want that? It must be pr- quality first against everyone else before you sell the fact that you are black or, or anything. And quick, quick thing, Cassandra, a real life example. Ne? Cassandra is my business partner. We have a client, ne? one of our first clients. That client, you know, every time we're in, in meetings, is constantly reminding us about, oh, you guys, your work, your work, guys, yo, I'm impressed, I'm beyond impressed. You, 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 you exceeded beyond my expectations. Yeah, but at first it was a compliment, but this person says it all the time. And then I started thinking to myself, I said, no, man. This person is basically saying, your work is quality, especially coming from black people. I didn't expect such from black people. I thought of it and I forgot to mention it to the rest of the, my business partners, but that's what it means. It's that undertone saying, hey, gents, for a black business, hey, you've outdone yourselves. I'm done. <laughs> Almost, almost. It's, 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 it's not. It's not that it's nice. It's too nice for <laughs> for us. <laughs> anyway, but yeah. Yeah, I get you guys. <laughs> I get you guys. And, yeah. and then, and then you also have the the issue of uh, of not saying no. Again, I'll go back to our business where we had a client. Ne? A client was coming with a lot of work, and it's a lot of business and money. But we. We, we, we were sitting and we were discussing, we say, Jens, but this is not our company. This is not what we do. And if we ex- accept this part of this business, chances are we'll mess it up because it's not what we do. Yes, we can do it. We can learn and try to figure that out, but there's a risk in it because we've never done it before. And we might mess it up and that will mess up our brand. So if we're doing this, we need to be upfront with the, with the uh, client and tell the client to get them to see now, letting us see it. But even when you want to take a gamble and trust us, we can try and pull it off for you. We can even do it at a discount since you're trusting us, but you must know up front with us. But usually, so with black people, you find someone is a photographer. Can you handle, can you come to my event or to my, to my wedding and take pictures? I feel and then uh, the hard drive, that is the images, gets lost. You... <laughs> It's a true story, Chief. It's a true story. My friend, on his wedding day, he got a photographer. That guy lost the hard drive as a talk. Imagine, Vid. Wedding photos, gone. We can't get the day back. Yeah, Vid. Yeah, yeah. So that's too close for home. But anyway. Yeah, but yeah. But, but, but guys, I've got, a, I've, got a pro, I've got a question about uh, black business. I'm going to price our call. Sometimes, I'm going to 
about too much about and they become just like crazy stuff like it doesn't get unreasonable and and about the person cars can't afford but then it's it's a product that that is needed because bits muta vela ai lenge price like so according i think we need to also look at 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 our pricing and hence we don't support each other because you know when you think you look for another business and then you think i wanna you know what i mean who who para philippe somewhere else you know what i'm trying to say because we know it cause tunama these guys but in abanga phandle pakistan they got this puzzle is is abo and those guys have killed e puzzle guys because when they come in there with the price that's cheap and when i go there because they're cheap so i'm gonna just tell you say what let's work so on so so can ever you know be more competitive yeah but you know also what influences that ne I'm, I'm, black people can't buy in bulk in most cases because of capital issues and what not. So what influences that to be expensive is because the cost of me to get it done is also expensive where I'm taller. So now I need to charge an amount that is much more expensive. And then that's, that's one side of it. The second side is um, in some products, okay, I'm trying to think some products that people sell on, on, on Twitter and social media, and then people are like i know man hey, this is too expensive and what not so you, you it's about choosing a target market yeah well, we 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 our marketing with us black people we think marketing is just making noise and everyone must know about it but sometimes the relevant people should know about it because if you go and you sell to people that are irrelevant you run the risk of pissing them off and then there is a whole negativity around your brand and they were just not the target market mm. you understand so it can be take when it started you would never find a capitec branch a canal walk or a centen city but you'd find it way it takes the rank ama shopping center was selection and what not because that was the target market and that's where the target market was then but as the brand evolved and turned into a bigger brand that was tapping into the high lsm market you now find it a centen city you now find it a, a a canal walk so it's just that example of saying again goes back to business planning choose your strategy and choose your people and sell to them <coughs> okay we're running out of time is uh, do we have any fi- uh, 15 seconds closing remarks no man um, i don't know what's what's the verdict guys what's the verdict about black businesses because uh, we we've discussed uh, all the shortfalls the shortcomings and the only thing close to that is what uh, apelli said about identity and actually respecting ourselves first and then we can move forward I agree with that. Is there more? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I think let's, as, as you guys are saying, Wuti, let's, let's be honest, you know, let's not bite off more than we can chew. Let's be accountable, mm. be responsible, let's be trustworthy, and our brand will speak for itself. Yeah, but. yeah the, those, are, those are solid, guys. Those are solid. Um, I don't know. Uh, I should thank you for indulging me here and sharing your thoughts with me. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, thank you. Thank sure. you. Thank you. Uh Miss Ndela, do you have any last remarks? Yeah, I think my last remarks is just um yeah, let's just watch how we treat each other. Let's respect each other more. Um let's just um do better within our communities and I think everything else will flow from there. And then you'll find it with naturally we'll support each other naturally. if someone's got a business you will start marketing that business as well so let's just try and unlearn some of the behaviors that we've got and also realize that we a black customer is as important as any other customer because it'll be bringing in the same amount of money that someone else would so let's just try and see ourselves and value ourselves first and i think everything else will flow from there and that's me cool thank you very much guys uh, that was in rizo Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to share our videos. Check us out on the socials, we're on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. It's @ibizo za. Till next time. Shout.